This is CNN Breaking News. I'm Poppy Harlow. Breaking news this hour. We begin with an update on Hillary Clinton's health. Her personal doctor just issuing a statement moments ago noting that Hillary Clinton on Friday was diagnosed with pneumonia. We'll also learn in the past few moments that according to a senior campaign advisor to the Clinton camp, her upcoming trip to California now in the air, she was supposed to fly to Los Angeles tomorrow. This after Clinton left a 9-11 remembrance ceremony here in New York early this morning to law enforcement sources do tell CNN it appears that the candidate fainted. The campaign, I should note, is not saying that. They're simply saying that she overheated and was diagnosed with pneumonia. Secretary Clinton has been experiencing a cough related to allergies on Friday during that follow-up evaluation of her prolonged cough. She was diagnosed with pneumonia. This is all from her doctor, Dr. Lisa Bardek. She was then put on antibiotics and advised to rest and modify her schedule. While at this morning's event, she became overheated and dehydrated. The doctor goes on to say, I have just examined her. She is now rehydrating and recovering nicely. That is the totality of the statement that we received from her doctor after she examined Clinton at her home in Chappaqua, New York. We have full team coverage uh, of all of this. After Clinton left that ceremony, she went to her daughter Chelsea Clinton's apartment in New York and then headed home where she was, we now know, examined by her doctor. Let me bring in our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, is with us. MJ Lee is also outside the apartment uh, of Chelsea Clinton, where Hillary Clinton went. And uh, Jeff Zeleny, seen as Jeff Zeleny, is on the phone with us from Washington with additional reporting. Sanjay, let me just get your reaction to the news. Not only that, that Secretary Clinton has pneumonia, but that this diagnosis came on Friday, and we did not learn about it. The public didn't learn about it until just now. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a bit surprising, especially given that there was um, a statement made after she had this episode where she had difficulty getting into the van. Uh, no mention of the pneumonia at that time, rather uh, just saying that she felt overheated, attributing the symptoms to that. Uh, also, you know, the, the diagnosis of pneumonia uh, typically involves, uh, besides a doctor's visits, typically involves uh, blood work. It may involve a chest x-ray, things like that. These are typically things that are done inside a clinic or a hospital or something like that. And, you know, it's a diagnosis that can be treated. Uh, she's on antibiotics, which means it's a bacterial pneumonia. Uh, but but it's, a, it's a serious diagnosis. Uh, the doctor recommended rest, recommended, um, you know, uh, obviously staying well hydrated because you, there's a real concern about dehydration. You have the fever. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the bacterial infection itself can cause the dehydration. So it makes sense uh, to, to fit this stuff together, but it still feels like there's a beat missing here. We got information late and it still seems incomplete. And MJ Lee, to you, you were with uh, Secretary Clinton on Friday. You were at the press conference that she held. You know she had a very, very busy schedule on Friday. Are you hearing anything else from the campaign at, at this time? I mean, the last statement I believe that we received from the campaign was hours ago from Nick Merrill, who said she overheated. Now the doctor is saying the pneumonia diagnosis. Anything else official from the camp? No word yet from the campaign after this doctor's note was released. We do not know if Clinton will continue with her California trip tomorrow. She was set to fly out to San Francisco and then go to L.A. She had multiple fundraisers and events planned for this week, a, a big West Coast swing. Uh, and I think the other question that the campaign potentially needs to address and certainly will be asked about a lot is why the campaign didn't disclose on Friday, which is when the doctor says... She, uh, Clinton was diagnosed with pneumonia, why the campaign didn't make this public on that day. Uh, I think today, learning that she was overheated, dehydrated, uh, that sort of seems to explain why she seemed to stumble. Uh, some law enforcement officials said that she appeared to even faint as she was getting into uh, the van. Uh, but I think the question about why the pneumonia diagnosis came on Friday, but she uh, didn't actually disclose that information to the public uh, until today, I think that's a question that the campaign will uh, have to answer or will certainly be asked. It, it and Jeff Zeleny to you, because you have been talking to a senior advisor to the Clinton camp who says that her, her California trip scheduled for tomorrow, she was supposed to be on the West Coast through Wednesday, is now up in the air there, uh, making a, quote, serious evaluation of her schedule going forward. But you noted, Jeff, that we know less, you said to me just moments ago, about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump in terms of their health than we have about a number of other presidential candidates in the past. How so? Poppy, it is really striking. These two candidates, Hillary Clinton, 68 years old, Donald Trump, a year older than that, 
uh, and Hillary Clinton just turned 69 in just a month's time. Uh, they're the oldest candidates, and whoever is sworn into office will, in fact, be the oldest uh, oldest president and uh, in the range of Ronald Reagan, but slightly older, I believe, if my math is correct. And we know less about their health records than recent presidential nominees. Uh, not in time. Of course, there have been presidents who have uh, kept their health issues uh, secretive over the years, as we know from history, FDR and others. But in these in recent presidential campaigns from John McCain to George W. Bush, to Barack Obama, to Mitt Romney, to George H.W. Bush and others, Michael Dukakis and others, they have released full medical records. In this case, Hmm. that is not the case. Hillary Clinton has been more forthcoming than Donald Trump. Donald Trump, as we've often talked about, has released a letter from his doctor that, uh, you know, was uh, viewed with suspicion by many in medical circles saying he would be the most, you know, the healthiest president of all time. Uh, But Hillary Clinton has only released a statement from her doctor, has not released medical records. And we do know that she, of course, was treated for that blood clot at the end of her term as Secretary of State in 2012, in the beginning of, uh, of 2013. And we have not uh, received medical records and allowed you know, professionals like Dr. Sanjay Gupta and others to look through them. Even John McCain back in 2008 campaign, he did not release them, but he allowed reporters like Dr. Gupta and others to come into a room in Arizona to inspect their records for mm. a period of hours. Uh, that has not happened in this case here. So, again, American voters know less about the health and vitality of either nominee at this point, and they're the oldest nominees than at any other point in our history. And I think it is something to take note of on both sides here, that we simply have been given less information. In an era when transparency is often called upon, Mm -hmm. we have very little of that here. And not knowing that she was diagnosed Friday with pneumonia, only finding that out now, I think uh, certainly is going to raise some questions that uh, will have to be answered in the coming days. Uh, Sanjay, back to you. I mean, you said to me last hour, look, it's a good idea for for both these candidates to release their medical records, to to just be fully transparent with the public. But you also noted something important, and that is that both of these candidates have been examined by their personal doctors, uh, not an independent board of physicians. Well, look, you know, and it's, it's a point that's come up in the past as well, not just with these two candidates. Uh, uh, Mr. Brinkley brought this point up at some point as well, that this idea that there's a friendship still between these personal doctors and these candidates. Um, clearly, with, with uh, Donald Trump's doctor's letter, you know, talking about him being the, the healthiest president ever and talking, it was just these glowing terms. It wasn't an objective letter. And I think, you know, the, the public deserves just objective letters on both sides, uh, mm-hmm. objective information as opposed to sort of the editorial uh, thing that might come from someone who has a more of a friendship sort of connection. So the idea of having an independent board of doctors or or allowing medical records to be seen uh, even by a group of reporters, I think uh, I think is important. Of course, you know, I think doctors and journalists are similar in this way, Poppy. You, you always want to get more information, certainly. I think right. with regard to this, what this more, more situation is happening right now, um, Having a diagnosis on a Friday and just hearing about it on Sunday after an episode, the, the, the sort of feel is that we may not have never heard about this had it not been sort of forced upon, that we've never heard right. about the diagnosis of pneumonia. And I think that that, that sort of information uh, is important to know. It's a treatable diagnosis, uh, imminently treatable. She's being treated for it, but it's also a serious diagnosis. And, uh, you know, that's the sort of thing that a lot of people would want to know. Absolutely. Sanjay, uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, thank you so much. Stay with me a lot more ahead on this. Also, MJ Lee reporting for us here in New York and Jeff Zeleny working his sources on this as well. Stay with us. We have a lot more ahead. Also, we're going to talk about, look, this is political. We are 58 days away from the election. So how could uh, an issue with Clinton's health, we now know she's been diagnosed with pneumonia, um, how could that uh, affect her in terms of the optics of all of this? Let's talk about it with Josh King. Josh King is with me. He's the founder of Polyoptics and the author of Off Script, an advanced man's guide to White House stagecraft, campaign spectacle, and political suicide. Um, Josh, when you look at this, um, this comes in an important context. And the context is that Donald Trump and a number of his surrogates and supporters have been questioning Hillary Clinton's health for a long time. And they've said she's off the campaign trail. She's napping. Where is she? Where's the energy? They point to a coughing episode, if you will. 
look, the facts are the facts. What we know is she overheated, and we know from her doctor she has pneumonia. But if she doesn't get on that plane tomorrow to California, what are the optics for her and her campaign? Well, Poppy, you know, a presidential campaign at 18 months is the most grueling marathon imaginable. And Americans, this is what you've got with two candidates, 70 and 68 years old. Right. We haven't seen this since 1981 when President Reagan took office. In, the, in President Clinton, President Bush, President Obama, these are people in their late 40s, early 50 years old, much more vigorous and ready to go for this 18-month marathon. These candidates are going to have health issues as they go through the final 58 days of the campaign and for the next four years. This is what we have when we have 70-year-old people uh, who, are, who are in the office of the presidency. So uh, for Secretary Clinton now to take a few days off, if that's what she has to do, it's not beneficial to her, but you can imagine that by the end of the week, uh, she'll be back at maintaining the same vigorous schedule she's had for the last 15 or so months. Mm -hmm. We'll see if she gets on that plane or not. But, you know, if you look back at President Carter stumbling outside of Camp David, President Reagan barely getting over the threshold of George Washington University Hospital after he was shot in the lung, President Bush vomiting in the lap of Prime Minister Miyazawa in Japan, President Clinton stumbling on the steps of Greg Norman's house the pool, and having that late night run to the hospital. These things happen to candidates. Uh, and, you know, does it take a new campaign uh, 90 minutes to uh, get the, to figure out what they're going to say, what they're going to share with the media? You know, that's, a, that's, an, that's what they, they need to figure out this rhythm and get this faster uh, to people who are following the campaign this closely. At, at the same time, what do you make of the, the silence? I mean, we haven't heard anything from, from Donald Trump, who, who's been, you know, his, his surrogates have certainly been outspoken on Hillary Clinton's health. Um, and he's talked about her being, you know, off the, off the campaign trail. He, he says she hasn't been. Um, what do you make of the notable silence? Well, I mean, you know, it's as Dr. Gupta said, uh, a 68 year old person standing in the middle of a ceremony in lower Manhattan uh, in a full uh, pantsuit can overheat. You yeah. can have a touch of pneumonia and not feel well. And then you can move on the next day and continue on with your schedule. I think we can we can be quick to judge the severity of this. And basically, come Monday, Tuesday, that we can be back to our normal schedule. Yeah. I was out uh, this morning early. It was very hot uh, and, and very humid and very uncomfortable. Uh, look, we've learned a lot in the last hour. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Josh King, with the optics of it all. We appreciate it. We have much more of this breaking news ahead. Also, uh, marking the anniversary 15 years later after this country was attacked on 9-11. Much more on that as well. Stay with us.